In the mid-1960s, Bell Labs distributed a a speech synthesizer kit to uh, schools around the U.S. so kids could play with the ideas behind simple formant synthesis. My high school physics teacher actually gave me one of these kits when I was a senior in high school, and uh, I built it. And I used it for a bunch of electronic music pieces that I made back then. A few audio fragments survive here and there and some old tapes, but the uh, hardware is long gone. But I never really forgot about this thing. Always wondered about it for years later. So after all these years, I found a completely intact kit online, totally unused, and scarfed it up and took a fresh look at it to see if I could turn it into a synthesizer module so I could use it in compositions I make with my current rig. So the thing arrives beautifully packaged with uh, all the components in separate boxes and bags and a a handy calculator slider for determining the values of the capacitors you need to get the desired frequencies and uh, also a tutorial book on speech synthesis that actually comes with a description of the circuit and the schematics. The circuit is really simple. It's basically just an exciter that's a narrow pulse waveform coming out of a a multivibrator made from two transistors. You can see it there at left. And then it's just got a series of three LC uh, resonator tanks, uh, inductor capacitor combinations that give you specific frequency bandpass filters. Uh, They're all coupled to each other. Uh, The uh, last pair is uh, isolated with a simple uh, two transistor Darlington pair. All of the uh, transistors in my uh, kit were germanium transistors, very old from the early 60s probably. And uh, the inductors, as you can see here, are uh, large ferrite cores with a a dense winding on them. They gave instructions on how to uh, put the coils together and uh, also uh, how to build the circuit itself. And uh, in this kit, there was no protoboard that came with it. You actually built the circuit itself on top of the box that the thing came in. Uh, There's essentially a sketch of the components on the box and you would just put in clips for the capacitors that you wanna swap out to change the frequencies and put the components uh, right up on top, poking the leads to the box and soldering underneath. This may be one reason why my original prototype that I had only lasted a year or two. It's uh, pretty fragile. The uh, little book that came with the kit had a lot of uh, interesting hints and information in it, uh, one of which was uh, this example where you could actually switch the uh, capacitors in the three four-man filters that were cascaded uh, using a rotary switch. So you could assign different resonant frequencies to different filters to have different kinds of four-man effects. I found this to be a great idea to do electronically because I can certainly uh, replace this rotary switch with a multiplexer and uh, then just go in with a digital code from my synthesizer, send it bits, and it can shift these frequencies by itself. The booklet came with uh, this table, for example, that uh, showed uh, a range of different frequencies uh, for different kinds of phonemes uh, that you would use in male and female voices. Uh, I found this a great place to start uh, to adjust the frequency ranges that my switchable capacitors would be able to cover. So I uh, took these frequencies and I uh, calculated components that could uh, be switched in and out to uh, attain all these different resonances. And uh, I prototyped one channel of this using the original transistors from the kit uh, and the original inductors, you can see it here, uh, just to see what it sounded like and check how a a CMOS multiplexer would work for a circuit like this. So you can see it here with the, uh, again, the original transistors, the capacitors that came with the kit, the inductors inside the Tupperware there. And uh, I'm uh, switching the resonant frequency uh, with uh, digital lines on the switches on the proto board uh, through the multiplexer. You can see the waveform that results and it's essentially working. This is what the thing kind of sounded like. Granted, I can do this digitally pretty easily now. Uh, It's just three cascaded bandpass filters, but the uh, distortion I get in the germanium transistors, uh, low headroom in this circuit, the way it's saturating, just give it its own brand of distortion, which you'll hear uh, in the final product in a few moments. I modified the original Bell Lab circuit in a few ways. Uh, for example, I added different ways you could pull signals out and put signals into different parts of the circuit. For example, I have an output with all three stages cascaded like in the original kit, or I can put analog signals into any stage of the filter separately. I can pull the outputs of each stage out separately. I even have a stereo output that combine the different stages to give uh, left and right channels to give you a stereo image. So I started building it. Uh, this uh, board here is the 
uh, mainly digital switching board with the uh, capacitors and the uh, uh, digital buffers and logic to switch the resonant frequencies. The blue board is mainly the analog board with the uh, drivers for the different stages, the transistors, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, then, of course, I put wires on it to connect it to my front panel. And then I design a panel that has uh, jacks for all the inputs and outputs to interface to my system. Uh, I drilled it out and labeled it, as I usually do, uh, put it all together, then wired it up laboriously. There will only ever be one of these modules. It's not made for mass production, as you can see. Uh, finally, I have the module uh, working and uh, ready to go. I built the little cabinet so I have more space in my synth rig for new modules like this. Uh, there it is sitting there. And uh, then, of course, uh, I had to test its basic function. So I'll start off the demo at a very simple level, going through every piece of the circuit. Here is the uh, pulse output, the direct output of the pulse it makes to excite the filters. You can adjust the frequency with the knob. And you can gate it on and off. Uh, one gate is uh, got a little bit of a hit to the frequency when it turns on and off. That was uh, the original gate on the speech synthesis kit itself. The other one I added to give it more of a staccato effect. So you can really switch the uh, pulse output on and off directly. And of course I can drive these with gates from my synthesizer system. Uh, the way I have all of my logic inputs on most all my modules is to exclusive or them with the switch. So if the switch is up, it actually inverts the gate. I can also uh, select my own voltage input to uh, drive the oscillator. Um, so I can control it again with the bias knob. Or I can also put a control voltage signal in that can change the frequency of this oscillator directly. So now I'm putting the pulse generator signal directly into the first filter and switching the frequency with the uh, switches. You can hear the format changing or the filter changing. I'm listening at this point also to the first filter output. Uh, you can hear uh, some clicks and pops occasionally when I switch the filter. This is just the nature of switching abruptly the capacitor in a resonant tank circuit. I may be able to play some tricks to attenuate that, but this gives this module another one of its special characters. And of course, I can drive these capacitor switches with signals from my synthesizer. So you see examples here. I can just keep adding gates from processes that are going on in sequencers and clocks and just have it develop its own rhythm. I can also apply a control voltage to a MOSFET across the whole thing and sweep it to more or less adjust the cutoff frequency smoothly at that stage. It does introduce its own distortion, but that's part of the fun. Now I'm uh, listening to the second stage. Uh, still keeping the signal coming to the first stage, switching the frequencies and adjusting the uh, gains here. I can also adjust the frequency continuously of that stage with the uh, MOSFET. And now I'm listening to the output of all three stages cascaded, the normal output of the speech synthesizer kit, and just switching the filters and uh, playing with the signals in between. And sweeping the MOSFET filter here, you can hear that and cut off with distortion that it does. The sweep sounds different on each stage. Now you can hear what the stereo output sounds like when I switch the different filters in different ways. And I can use gates from all over my synthesizer to put in complex patterns of uh, format switching. Thank
So here I put an external signal into the filter bank coming from an uh, organ I have playing a chord. Uh, I can have it straight or put it through a distorted input, and then I can switch the formats on that. I can also add in a bit of the original pulse waveform, tune it up to the organ chord, and then play with that one. Putting the organ sound into the second stage here and uh, just uh, balancing the inputs and switching the timbres. Listening to the stereo output here with all three filter banks engaged and the synthesizer just switching the timbres, adding another sound source here too. This is the uh, kind of beautiful complexity this module can generate in timbre and you can hear all the interesting distortion it makes. I can also use it with a keyboard here. I just uh, have different keys uh, change the pitch uh, diatonically, but as well, uh, every time I hit a different key, it puts in a different code into the uh, timbre switches. So every note sounds different. <laughs> And so to take us out, let's try another piece with a module. Uh, starting with something familiar, the three notes going into the three stages, uh, all coming from uh, the beginning of Richard Strauss's Zarathustra. We all know it as a tribute here to 2001. The audio here features the output of the module with a little bit of echo coming in occasionally. And this reaches its own hazy minimalist vibe, so I'll just let it run from here on. Thank you. 